Nice to see you. I'm Khadar Chukhtai and you're watching my YouTube channel School of Advanced Chemistry. Today I'm going to discuss IGCSE and O-Level Chemistry Crash Course Revision. In this revision, we are going to talk about how to report answers regarding the bonding and structure question, especially in paper 2. Let's get started. In this topic, I'm going to explain briefly ionic bondings, covalent bonding, metallic bonding, and the uh, dot and cross diagrams, alloys, structure of alloys, reason for the high melting and high boiling point and reason for the conductivity in ionic compound. Let's talk about turn by turn. First of all, ionic bonding. Strong electrostatic force of attraction between opposite ions. A force of attraction that holds oppositely charged particles, opposite ions together is called an ionic bond. So, typical definition is strong electrostatic force of attraction that holds oppositely charged particles together is said to be an ionic bond. For example, when sodium ion is allowed to meet with a chloride ion, then there is the formation of, then there is the establishing, I mean there is the formation of ionic bond. The force of attraction between sodium ion and Cl negative ion is said to be the ionic bond and it is also said to be electrostatic force of attraction. Same is the case in case of ammonium ion that is a positive ion and Cl negative ion that is a negative ion. This force of attraction is also said to be an ionic bond. So from this picture you can see that you can conclude that uh, this attraction in first case sodium and sodium ion and Cl negative ions are attracting each other. Sodium is a metal ion and Cl negative ion is non-metallic ion. But in second example NH4 is the non-metallic positive ion. Non-metallic positive ion and Cl is negative ion is also non-metallic ion. So ionic bond may be developed between one metal positive ion and one metallic non-metallic non negative ion. It may be developed, especially in your O-level chemistry, this is one of the famous case you can say, or you can say an exceptional case. When ammonium ion is allowed to react when, with any other negative ion, then the bond form is said to be again ionic bond. So sodium ion attracts Cl negative ion, by a force of attraction called ionic bond. Ammonium ion attracts Cl negative ion or any other negative ion by the force that is said to be ionic bond. So these two examples are the typical example of ionic bond. However, this ammonium ion is having covalent bonds inside the molecule of NH4. NH4, one nitrogen, four hydrogens are bonded themselves by covalent bond, yes, it is true. So, I mean, it uh, it can be known as uh, covalent as well as ionic bond. Ionic compounds, the structure of ionic compound is joint lattice structure. Ionic compound can be represented in these four different, or you can say three different ways. I mean, sodium ion, let's suppose in case of sodium bromide, sodium ion is surrounded by four negative Br negative ion. So, one positive ion is surrounded by all negative ions and same is the case. One negative ion is surrounded by all positive ion. One each Br is surrounded by all positive ion. This phenomena can also be expressed in this way. Again, one negative ion is directly surrounded by the positive ion and the positive ion is directly surrounded by the negative ion. However, we can form, we can write, we can draw ionic lattice like that. MgO, magnesium oxide for example. So magnesium is a positive ion and in front of magnesium there are all negative ion. Magnesium, this is O negative ion. Magnesium and this is O2 negative ion. Again in front of magnesium there is O2 negative ion. So this is a regular structure that is said to be a lattice structure and generally speaking all these form of representation are said to be joint lattice structure. So you can represent in this way, you can write in this way, you can write in this way and uh, I mean normally speaking 
you should write the structure of ionic compound as far as the O level syllabus or IGCSE syllabus is concerned. If you are going to write the cubic structure specially, then you will write this one structure. That is the true and good representation of ionic compound. Next one. Properties of the ionic compound. There are basically, you can say, overall six properties. Number one, all ionic compounds are solid at room temperature. All ionic compound, all ionic compound, no exceptions are over here. All ionic compound are solid at room temperature. They are hard and brittle. They are, I mean, hard and brittle. Uh, if they are hammered, they can be changed into different pieces. So they are hard and brittle. That is the second property. Third one, they do not conduct electric current in solid state. In form of solid, in solid form, there are ions, but ions are not freely moving ions. They are not free to move. These ions are delocalized. They are, these ions are not said to be, I mean, these ions are not delocalized. These are said to be localized or they are not free moving ion. They are said to be static ions. So in solid, uh, ionic compound do not conduct electric current. However, when they are melted or if they are water soluble, when they are dissolved into the water, then their ions become free and they can move around, they can move in a delocalized way. Now the ions are delocalized. So molten sample of ionic compound and aqueous sample of ionic compound are the good connector of electricity, are the good connector of electricity and so on. The fifth one is they are having high melting and high boiling point. Why they are having high melting and high boiling point? Generally speaking, uh, they are having strong bonds. Number one, they are having strong bonds. Number two, the most important reason, the second one point is they are having giant structure. Giant ionic structure. Giant ionic structure. So every type of ionic compound is showing high melting and high boiling point. I mean melting point and boiling point is uh, supposed to be the one uh, physical property. Why they are showing high melting and high boiling point? Uh, basically, they are hosting strong ionic bonds, number one, number two, and these bonds are in, uh, in, in a numerous quantity in very much high numbers. I mean, they are present in giant lattice structure. So that is why ionic compounds are having always high melting and high boiling point. However, uh, there is a difference between the melting and boiling point of the different ionic compound. I mean, all ionic compounds are not having, having the same value of melting and boiling point. For example, magnesium oxide is having re remarkably, remarkably high melting point as compared to NaCl. What is the reason behind it? This magnesium oxide is having double positive and double negative charges. Those are attracting themselves as compared to NaCl. This NaCl is having uh, less number of positive and negative charges in its formula unit. So basically positive number of positive and negative charges also determine the strength of ionic bond. Higher the number of positive and negative charges, stronger the ionic bond. Less number of positive and negative charges, weaker or less stronger the bond. The second thing is, as I told you generally, the strength of electrostatic force of attraction depends upon the number of charges, positive and negative ion. And the second phenomena is size of opposite ion. If the opposite ion, the size of opposite, the size of opposite ion is smaller, then it means that their ionic bond will be stronger. If the size of opposite ion is larger, then their bond will be less stronger. The last one, uh, the point six, you can say, Many ionic compounds are soluble in water, but not all. I mean, some ionic compounds like NaCl, group 1 compounds are usually water soluble. Ammonium ion compounds are water soluble and so on. So some, or, uh, some ionic compounds are water soluble, but not all. Now, come towards the covalent bonding. Strong electrostatic force of attraction by which atoms share their electron. I mean, strong forces of attraction between the atom when they share electron mutually. 
So again, I'm using the same word, electrostatic force of attraction between the atoms when they mutually shared electron. So the sharing of electron is referred to the covalent bond when bond is formed between the two atoms when they are going to share, mutually share their electrons and this is said to be, again, it is said to be electrostatic force of attraction but because of the sharing of electron, it is said to be a covalent bond. It is said to be covalent bond. Structure of the covalent bond may be the simple or it may be the giant structure. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about the simple covalent molecule. For example, hydrogen, H2, Cl2, N2, O2, CO2 and so on. These are the typical examples of simple covalent molecules and they are having less number of atoms in a one unit in a one molecule. Similarly, some organic compounds are also said to be simple covalent molecule like ethanol, like ethanoic acid. I mean these type of compound, these type of organic compound are said to be, are supposed to be again simple covalent molecule because their one molecule is again having less number of atoms and less number of different atom you can say and so on. The next one is the giant or macromolecular structure. I mean there are the two type of covalent compounds. Covalent compounds may be simple covalent compound. They may be giant or macromolecular covalent compounds. Overall, generally, there are two compounds, ionic compounds, covalent compounds. In case of covalent compound, there are further two categories, two division. One is said to be simple covalent molecule and other ones are known as, are said to be macromolecule or giant macromolecule. You can say giant covalent molecule, you can also say it. The first one is the diamond. For example, this is, is the uh, general diagram of the diamond. In diamond, each carbon is basically directly bonded with the four other carbon atom. This diamond is having, this smallest unit of the diamond is having tetrahedral structure. So, in case of diamond, each carbon is bonded with the four other carbon atom by the strong covalent bond. This CC bond, this carbon-carbon bond is a very much strong bond and this structure is said to be giant structure. I mean, there are huge number of carbon, carbon, single, strong bond. There are huge number of carbon, carbon, strong bond. So, a structure is joint and this is said to be, uh, this is known as a macromolecular element. This is an allotropic form of carbon in case of diamine. So, diamine number one, in the structure of diamine, each carbon is atom is using its all electrons. It's bonded with the four other carbon atom. It is interlocking tetrahedral structure. I mean the whole unit is having tetrahedral units but the overall there is only one molecule that is having almost very much high number of almost uncountable number of carbon atoms. The next one is graphite. Basically graphite you can say uh, this is a macromolecular structure. In graphite the carbon-carbon bonds are less as compared to the diamond. In this structure, each carbon atom is bonded with the three other carbon atoms. In graphite, each carbon atom is making three bonds around it with three other carbon atoms. And the next major difference between graphite and the diamond is, its structure is in form of layer. There are the layered structure, hexagonal layered structure. Giant molecular structure of the graphite is in form of layer and layers are composed up of hexagons. So it is hexagonal giant layered structure. There are different sort of layers, different, I mean, number of layers and between each layer there are weak bonds. There are weak bonds between each layer and moreover there is basically the presence of delocalized electron. There are free electron. So it is having layered structure. Each layer is having hexagon of the carbon atoms. Each carbon atom is bonded with the three other carbon atoms. And the next, uh, these layers are 
uh, having weak bonds between them and these weak bonds are also said to be van der van der waals forces or bonds so weak bonds are between the layers there are not very much i mean rigid bonds between the layers layer structure and there are the weak bond between the layers the second one there are free electron each carbon is having one unbonded electron so these type of electrons are delocalized and we are having the typical structure of graphite and so on this is also having the high melting point high boiling point because of strong carbon carbon bonds are over here and the structure is also said to be joint structure it is also said to be joint or macro molecular structure however the graphite is soft because layers can slide to each other layers can slip to each other because there are the weak bonds present between the layers there are no any type of true covalent bond between the layers the next one type is basically said to be silicon i mean silicon uh, that is having a true resemblance with the diamond in silicon each silicon atom is bonded with the four other silicon its structure is quite pretty similar as that of the structure of diamond so silicon is also said to be having the molecular or the joint or the macro molecular structure i mean and it is also having high melting point high boiling point high density and it is also said to be the hard and so on and its structure is again having the quite resemblance with the diamond let's talk about silicon dioxide silicon dioxide is also having giant or macro molecular structure the structure of silicon is in which silicon is at central atom and it is having four oxygen atom around it i mean each silicon is directly bonded with the four oxygen atom and each oxygen is directly bonded with the two silicon atom each oxygen is directly bonded with the two silicon atom and each silicon is directly bonded with the four oxygen atom the structure is quite pretty similar as that of of the diamond and this sio2 basically it's used to make a glass that is said to be the quartz a typical form of a glass i mean is a crystalline form of silicon dioxide quartz is a crystalline form of the silicon dioxide when it is cooled rapidly enough it doesn't crystallize but solidifies as a glass so glass is a source of silicon dioxide generally speaking and silicon dioxide is having a macro molecular structure so it is having high melting point high boiling point high density and so on the next thing is metallic bonding metallic bonding again as you know the bond is electrostatic force of attraction between different species electrostatic force of attraction between two opposite ion is called ionic bond i am going to repeat my the defin different definitions electrostatic force of attraction between two non metallic atom those are sharing electron is called covalent bond electrostatic force of attraction that is lying between delocalized electron and static positive ion between delocalized electron and static positive ion are said to be metallic bonding these are basically different unique type of bonding you can say as compared to the other two covalent and ionic bonding let's see what is the structure of typical demonstration or typical structure of a metal for example i am going to demonstrate the structure of magnesium metal in structure of metal there are a layer of a regular pattern of magnesium ions second layer of magnesium ion third fourth i mean metallic structure is a layered structure it is having the layers of static positive ion and they delocalize their valence electron for example magnesium is having two electron magnesium can delocalize two electron each magnesium look delocalizes two electrons and these two electron from each magnesium atom are start wandering around all these atoms tightly binding themselves i mean they are not completely detaching from this lattice 
these electrons are basically delocalized not they are completely lost there is the delocalization of electron not the loss of electron so there is the force of attraction electrostatic force of attraction that is going to develop between the static layer of positive ion and the freely moving electrons they are said to be delocalized electron those are freely moving between the lattice like honeybees and this structure is said to be giant metallic structure or giant lattice metallic structure basically giant metallic lattice is a shortcut name is a precise name of this structure and so on metals are also having high melting and high boiling point why they are having high melting and high boiling point because they are having giant structure they are having giant structure giant metallic lattice and they are having strong metallic bond strong forces of attraction so once again the reason is basically giant structure strong bond where there are giant structures and strong bonding they are having high melting and high boiling point usually generally you can say <clears throat> the next thing is dot and cross diagram of the ionic compound for example when an ionic compound is developed between a metal and between a non metal for example it's a magnesium metal it is having two outermost electron when it is allowed to react with the fluorine atom and these both type of elements are not having complete octet their shells outermost shell are incomplete this magnesium is having only two electron and this fluorine atom is having seven electron so there is a loss of two electron by the magnesium atom magnesium atom loses two electron one magnesium this is called the complete transfer of electron magnesium transfers electron to the non metallic permanently completely in this case in this way and it is changing itself into magnesium two positive ion when any atom loses the electron basically it is supposed to have positive charge as magnesium is losing two electron it is going to have two positive charge i mean it is a magnesium positive ion same is the case with the f but opposite one you can say each fluorine atom is gaining one electron one magnesium is losing two electron two different atom of f are coming and they are receiving one one electron to complete their octet now the magnesium is has complete outermost shell now it is having one less shell i mean this magnesium is having two shells initially it was having three shells no electron no shall be there so now this is said to be an outermost shell and this outer most electron shell is basically having eight electron now its shape its structure is quite similar to the, as that of noble gases structure like neon like krypton and so on now this magnesium ion is supposed to be uh, as you can say immortal it is supposed to be more stable ion as compared to its parental magnesium atom same is the case this f has been changed into one negative ion because each fluorine atom has gained one electron this gain electron is shown over here by the cross and all the rest of electron of the f are shown by the crosses and this electron sorry this is basically shown by the dot so this electron uh, uh, the newer electron the electron that is donated by sent by the magnesium atom is basically shown by the dot and rest of the all electron are shown by the cross to show the original possession of fluorine originally fluorine was having overall seven electron in its last shell there are seven crosses and this dot is also now present over here it means that it is accepted from any other source from magnesium in this case so we are going going to represent magnesium by the dot electron of the magnesium by the dots and electron of the fluorine by the crosses finally this is the final diagram of 
magnesium fluoride as an ionic compound i mean we have applied brackets over here that is the division of positive and negative spheres there is a positive sphere that is having two plus charge here's a negative sphere that is having one negative charge there are two mole of negative species 2f so this is the typical definition typical uh, exhibition you can say of dot and cross diagram one ion with the dots other ion with the cross electron of one ion with the dot electrons of the other ion with the crosses so um, charges at the top right corner of the bracket and this is general typical presentation of dot and cross diagram of the ionic compound now come to the dot and cross diagram in covalent molecules are in covalent compound for example i am supposed to draw over here a dot and cross diagram of n2h4 this is a covalent simple covalent molecule as nitrogen is non metal hydrogen is non metal usually non metals meet together to make covalent molecule usually this is not the case always but usually non metals meet together to make covalent simple covalent molecule first of all we should know the valencies of these two type of element there are two type of element one is in the nitrogen and another one is hydrogen we know that the valency of nitrogen is equal to 3 mean nitrogens can make three covalent bond around it nitrogen can make three covalent bond around it and hydrogen can make only one covalent bond around it so first of all i am going to draw a lewis diagram a displayed formula of nitrogen, two nitrogen, four hydrogen. First of all, I'm writing two nitrogen and four hydrogen in such a way that each nitrogen is having three bonds around it. In such a way, then each hydrogen is having one bond around it. So let's see over here. Each nitrogen is having three bonds. Each nitrogen is having three bonds and each hydrogen is having one one bond around it. So this is said to be Lewis diagram according to the normal valencies of the element. The second one thing is I'm going to check any presence of lone pair on either nitrogen or hydrogen. As you know hydrogen is having only one electron and it has utilize its electron in bonding with the nitrogen so there is no any possibility of lone pair on hydrogen atom however come towards nitrogen atom nitrogen atom belongs to group number five it means that it is having five outermost electron it has used three electrons in bonding each nitrogen atom has utilized three its last electron last shell electron in bonding so it means that there are two electrons left on each nitrogen atom and this pair of electron is said to be lone pair that is not taking part in chemical formation in chemical bond formation same is the case with the other nitrogen this nitrogen is also behaving similarly it is also utilizing its three outer shell electron in covalent bonding and one pair of electron is yet unbonded so unbonded pair of electron that is residing in the last shell of electron is said to be a lone pair i am drawing a new diagram with lone pair so this is the complete picture you can say complete this is complete lewis diagram of n to h4 the last one step is very much easy step you can say i am going to er erase these lines i am going to remove these lines and i am putting dot cross dot cross dot cross let's suppose i am uh, marking dot with the nitrogen and cross for hydrogen i mean cross is the electron of hydrogen dot is the electron of nitrogen same is the case over here same is the case over here and same is the case over here and now the final case is uh, we are removing these line these two line i'm putting again dot over here i am removing these bonds between the atom and this is basically finally 
a dot and cross diagram over here and one thing that you have to check it over here each nitrogen atom i mean central atom must be having octet around it so two electrons two electrons two electrons two two plus two four plus two six plus two eight each nitrogen atom is having its complete octet once again overall picture you can write you can draw it like that without bonds marking dot and cross and this is the final picture of dot and cross diagram there is no need to draw the circles between these atoms however you can draw it for example i am going to draw the circles over here this is the nitrogen i mean uh, nitrogen circle and this is the second nitrogen circle between these two circle these blue electron are said to be the shared pair of electron or bonded electron shared pair bond pair is one and the same thing two different name of the covalent bond same thing covalent bond same is the case i'm going to draw a circle for hydrogen that is having dot and cross over here in this case same is the case for this hydrogen for this hydrogen for this hydrogen and so on however there is i mean no any sort of restriction to draw this circle you can draw an open dot and cross diagram come to the structure of alloys and what are the alloys basically alloys are the physical mixture of different metals and metals are non metals so the physical mixing of metals two or more than two metals are the physical mixing of metal and non metal is said to be this mixture is typically known as an alloy all metals can make alloy and the second one thing is all alloys are good conductor of electricity and heat all metals can form alloy and alloys are good conductor of electricity and heat this is the typical uh, i mean physical properties of the alloy and uh, simple metal as well now this is the typical structure typical diagram of alloy alloy is a mixture of different size of nuclei for example i am going to mix two type of nuclei one is b other one is a so it is a size of uh, the black dot the black uh, uh, sphere is showing the presence of a and the white circle or white spheres are showing b it's a mixture of a and b so there is no i mean uh, symmetry of the layers as that you have seen in the metallic structures so the mixing of different size of nuclei disrupt the symmetry of the layers disrupt the slipability of the layers and make them harder st and stronger here are the different points that you will have to remember to report your answer why the alloys are more strengthened as compared to the simple normal metal number 1 pure metal is malleable but the presence of different atomic radii size in the mixture disrupt the symmetry of the layers and reduces the slipability of one layer to the next layer this result a stronger a harder a less malleable but more brittle mixture that is said to be an alloy so as far as my opinion is concerned you will have to remember this paragraph for the typical response of uh, i mean the structure and the strength of alloy why alloys are having uh, more strength than as that of a single element metallic element here is the reason you can see and why what is the basic structure of an alloy the similar one is over here so this is the model answer this is the model answer and you will have to uh, put the similar words same syntax you can say same arrangement of the typical terms in your answer and you will get full marks as far as my opinion is concerned well the last one is the summary of the structures there are basically two structures some structure are said to be the giant structure and some structure are said to be the simple molecular structure three structures are giant structure 
Ionic compounds having giant structure. Macromolecules are having giant structure. Metals having giant structure. Metals having giant structure. All ionic compounds having giant structure. And typical macromolecule, those are four in your syllabus, diamine, graphite, silicon, and silicon dioxide. All these are also having giant structure. Other one, simple molecule like H2O, like NH3, like O2, like nitrogen, I mean N2, like chlorine gas, Cl2, like HCl, like sulfuric acid, I mean H2SO4, like organic compounds, they all are having simple molecular structure. Simple molecular structure. Now, here is a table for the reasoning of high melting and high boiling point. As I told you, ionic bonds are having giant structures, giant ionic structures. Covalent, strong covalent bonds, bonding that is over here, they are may be having the giant structure. Strong metallic bonds are also having the giant structure. And if the structure is giant, melting point will be high. If the structure is giant, melting point will be high. If the structure is giant, melting point will be the high. Once again, strong ionic bond in giant structure, strong covalent bond in giant structure, strong metallic bond in giant structure. These all are going to lead towards the high melting points and high boiling points. But in this case, here is a one simple thing you can say. Uh, simple structure molecule like H2O, like N2, like CO2, like Cl2, like H2, these are having weak Van der Waal forces between them. I mean, when you are going to melt them down, they are having low melting point. If the structure is simple, melting point will be lower, boiling point will be lower. And the next thing is, uh, when they are melted, when they are heated to melt down, when they are basically heated to boil off, then there is no breakage of any bond. In case of simple covalent molecule, listen me carefully, in case of simple covalent molecules, when you are going to melt them out, whenever you are going to boil them off, then there is a breakage of, there is the basically we are going to overcome the weak intermolecular force. There are weak intermolecular forces. Those are supposed to be broken down. And the chemistry of molecule remain unchanged. Formula of the molecule remain unchanged. In case of simple molecules, on melting, on boiling, there is no change in chemical formula. There is only change in physical state and intermolecular forces. These are also said to be wonder wall forces. They are overcome. The next thing is whenever you are going to heat uh, ionic compounds, covalent macromolecules, covalent bonds, I mean giant macromolecule like diamond, like graphite, like silicon, like silicon dioxide. And whenever you are going to heat to melt any metallic lattice, then indirectly speaking, you are breaking metallic bonds. In case of diamond, graphite, silicon, you are breaking covalent bond, carbon-carbon bonds, silicon-silicon bonds, silicon-oxygen bonds, and so on. In case of ionic compound when ionic compound are melted in fact there is the breakage of cleavage of strong ionic bond i mean when we heat strong when we heat ionic compound ionic bonds are broken down when we heat macromolecule covalent bonds are broken down when we heat melt metals up to the melting or boiling point metallic bonds are broken down the next one, there is basically a scheme to choose the nature of simple covalent molecules or ionic compounds. I mean, if you are having the data of melting point, the data of solubility, electrical conductivity, physical state, density, these are the indication about the nature of the different compounds. By knowing the values of melting point, solubility data, electrical conductivity, physical state, density, we can predict, we can predict the nature of bonding. Let's see over here. For example, in case of ionic compounds, ionic bonding, 
the melting point will be more than that of 500 degrees celsius you can call it his a rule you can call it tip and trick you can say roughly speaking the melting point will be usually will be above 500 degrees celsius mostly ionic compounds are water soluble but not the all ionic compound are water soluble as i have told you in my previous slides the next one is electrical conductivity in molten state ionic compound are very much good conductor if they are in kept in molten state in molten form in molten state they are having basically good electrical conductivity ionic compounds are solid at room temperature ionic compound are solid at room temperature there is no exception and obviously they are having high density the density of ionic compound is higher once again i'm going to repeat this point to check to predict the nature of compound if it is ionic compound its melting point will be higher than that of 500 degrees celsius it will be it may be usually it will be soluble in water moreover it's it will definitely be the good conductor of electric current from its molten state its physical state will be solid and its density will be the high or higher now in case of simple cobalt molecule i mean again i'm going to apply the similar points usually the melting point will be lower than that of 500 degrees celsius simple cobalt molecule are not usually this is not the fixed one usually they are not water soluble they are not having any electrical conductivity in molten state their physical state is usually with few exception usually the physical state of the simple cobalt molecule uh, is the liquid or the gases and as i told you uh, there are few exception iodine is solid at room temperature the physical state of iodine is solid the physical state of glucose sugar i mean is solid physical state of sulfur is solid physical state of co2 is solid so there are few exception few simple covalent molecule may have solid state at room temperature but usually simple covalent molecule are having liquid are the gaseous state at room temperature they are having low density and if there is slippery to touch then this is the specific indication of graphite as far as oleable syllabus is concerned only graphite is the element is the species that is having this physical properties i mean it, it is slippery to touch so for example i am writing another two example ALCl3 its melting point is 180 degrees celsius ALF3 aluminium fluoride is having 1290 degrees celsius melting point both are having metals and non metals both are having metals and non metals but the melting point of ALCl3 is 180 degrees celsius and as compared to this one ALF3 is having 1000 290 degree almost melting point so it clearly indicates that this is an ionic compound and this above one alcl3 is covalent compound it's a simple covalent compound you can say it's a simple covalent molecule in spite of having an a metal in the compound there is a metal in the compound even though it is having simple covalent structure yes it is possible so these are the basic tips and tricks that you will have to remember to find your answer very much easily and successfully that's all for today thank you very much